Good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Stuff and Such. It's finally starting to look like maple syrup season's about to kick off. I've been kind of fiddling away with it for about oh, a week and a half now. Nothing really exciting to show you, so I haven't really filmed anything. So today it's one of the nicer days. Sap's seeming to run not bad. So I'm going to start up a boil here, get things. Get things progressing in that department, and then I'll head up on the head up up on the ridge and show you the sap coming out of the trees and show you how fast it's running and the suction that's making and maybe install a few more lines up in there, a few more taps rather. Right now we're running about 300 300 taps. We finished. 12 gallons of syrup so no 12 liters of syrup so far so nothing really right home about I got uh, two barrels here filled ready to rock I was hoping for a few more days of good weather so I could get about five barrels set up so I don't have to stop for about three days of steady boil but looking at the forecast it looks like it's gonna shut down pretty well after today a little front coming in there it's gonna be kind of cold so we're gonna start boiling today concentrate everything get it knocked down and I doubt we'll finish but just start showing some of the process before we get too too far into this video get you subscribed We'd greatly appreciate it all right let's get going so here's the hillbilly boiler I made here I added in this big old chunk of concrete that way the flame comes around and licks down on the bottom of the pan working not too bad she weighs about 1200 pounds now which is uh, a slight uh, slight cumbersome but you know how it is you just grunt a little harder and make her move things things happen to work so we'll throw the pan up on here fill her up with sap and then we'll uh, strike a light under it and then we'll get get to work All right, so that's gonna take a good while to warm up there. So I'll just leave that be. I think it holds about 30 gallon in there, if I recall. I'll have to count the buckets on the film. So we're gonna load up the old truck here and then we'll head up into the woods. <laughs> so here we have the gravity just Five sixteenths, they're just extras that are on the low side here. I just added them on there just because. Seems like it's actually doing not too bad, really, for all things considered. Has an open end on the other end. This one's a dead one. I'm gonna try and tap those today. I combined this one with this one here. So we have 50 taps now on this one. Now, being as this is probably one of my better days I've seen, I need to check and make sure I got no back pressures. This one here is running like crazy too. And that one has uh, 50 taps on it also. That just looks like a steady, <laughs> steady stream of sap coming through there for a considerable amount of time. And then we have over here 5 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths combo. It has 50 taps of all 5 16 material line taps 
tees running to so after those 50 taps it runs to a conversion uh, adapter from the 5 16th and 3 16th line and then it runs 30 feet straight downhill in the 3 16th line creating that vacuum seems to be working pretty good and these three over here they have about 25 taps a piece and they're running pretty good too all right let's throw on the snowshoes get up in the bush here and we'll uh, check things out so we're sort of into the bush a little ways here as you can see there's a collection tank down there probably about 15 feet a drop or so nothing crazy so I'm at my second tap here now the way you tell if if you have uh, too much tap or too much sap going through your line is this way I'm out of breath but you're huffing and puffing like a winded buffalo anyways so what you do is just near the bottom of your your line you pull a kind of crack open a tap The audio pick that up so it's still sucking that's what you want to hear and what will happen is you have too much the sap will try and flow back up through your tap and and uh, it'll be pressurized so that's pretty good actually quite quite happy with that I still think we got a, a leak somewhere in this line somewhere onward upward we go this is pretty cool little spot here Let's see that that's a big line there, full 5 sixteenths. Just pouring. So that has 50 taps on it. And it's making vacuum. And down here, if you can see that, the lighting out here is pretty hard. That's a lot of sap. See how many bubbles are in this line? I'm pretty sure there's a leak somewhere. So I'm gonna go look for it. If I find it, I'll show you. So here we have a good example of a leak. See the bubbles on this line? And as I move my tap in, stops. Open her up a touch. Bubbles. That's kind of what you're looking for. There's one issue I have yet to figure out how to be able to detect besides just stumbling upon it. And that's a plugged T or even a restricted T. I've had it happen twice in the same spot. I don't know if it was just the kind of, it was a different manufacturer than my typicals or what it was, but I just happened upon it and that's kind of, kind of been causing a bit of issues. I haven't really, haven't really had many issues with plug T's, but then again, I don't really know if I've had issues with plug D's because I can't wander around and check every 300 of them. It doesn't make extra bubbles. It doesn't. The only reason I found this one is because it was where I added more taps. So I just kind of happened to wander over there just to look at it. And what I was noticing was happening every time bubbles would come to that T, it was very weird. Every time the bubbles would come to that T, the whole line would chatter a little bit. Just a wee bit. Just a little bounce. I've never seen that before. So I sat there and looked at it for, well, probably 20 seconds. And chattering and then I just happened to kind of look at the end of the T near the hole near the inlet and there was just a little little uh, wood chip laying against it but I had no idea that there was anything wrong with the line it, it didn't give any weird symptoms or so I don't know I don't know how you tell that so anyways we're gonna go keep looking for that leak as you can see we're Getting near the top, and she's still still flowing pretty fast, and there's still a lot of bubbles in it. Another way you can tell a leaking tap is that. Let's 
see if that's fixed that. All right, found the leak. See the difference in speed here? Move the tap. better I think we got her sometimes what can happen is you can get into a a soft spot into the tree and then it'll suck air through the tree which point you're kind of limited to either just you can drill a new hole and put a new tap in or you can you can just pull it out of the tree and stick it back into the holder or you can just simply not care Getting hard to move around the bush with the snowshoes. He's hoped to figure there'd be more of a crust still. Anyways, we're gonna get down off the hill here and start thinking about tapping some more trees. Everything seems to be running pretty good. Kind of wonder if I should maybe run over to those three other lines over there and just have a look, see what's going on over there. Overall, not too bad. There might still yet be one more leak, I'm not sure. Ugh. Stupid. Gracious. Snow has lost all of its strength. Ouch. And I lost my snowshoe. Ugh. Oh my goodness. This is not good. see if we can get out of here that'll wrap up today's little video go ahead and subscribe greatly appreciate it we'll uh, continue throwing out videos on the maple syrup season including filtering tapping 3 16 line 5 16 line we'll try and have a whole bunch out here for you today was just kind of more of a jumble of everything maybe it'll pique your interest and get you outside and doing the fun stuff